Hello YouTube and uh, people of Facebook and other social media platforms. I'm on a beach! I've had a company in all this week and last couple of weeks uh, using my live room as a film studio, which is something we quite often do, um, especially my uh, other role at Banter Media. So I've been having some big, sweaty, airy guys and lovely ladies uh, using this space, so I thought I'd just take advantage of the green screen. So um, I want to follow up on a video that I did a while back where I was talking about the RME radar card that I got. I would show you, but it's in the computer. It's a bit tricky to get out. Uh, not only has it been fantastic, I mean, latency is kind of a thing of the past now, uh, because uh, it's a PCIe card, I've got 64 sample latency, which is just on just around a millisecond. Uh, so the round trip latency is ridiculous. And a PCIe and Thunderbolt are actually the same thing, except one's been converted to work with a connector. So if you've seen all this to do about Thunderbolt cards recently, the Thunderbolt interfaces, PCIe provides exactly the same level of performance. Uh, now, I've been asked quite a few questions about this, and one of them was, how does it sound? Which, if you think about it, isn't a very good question. And that's, that's no one's fault. It's, um, the reason it's not a very good question is that the RADAT, um, it's a digital only card. Um, it's 32 channel in, 32 channel out, and a bit more, I think, if you count the SP diffs and AES, I think it's like 36 in and 36 out. But it doesn't have any analog audio at all. What you have to get is you have to have separate ADC and DAC, so analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters. And if your sound sources are not already at line level, you're going to need microphone preamps separately as well. Now this depends, this is the route that I've gone after several years running a studio. When I first started up, I had a, a, an all-in-one interface. Uh, I think it was some Ediroll thing. I upgraded quite a few years ago now to a Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56. Now that unit had eight microphone preamps in it and eight channels of analog to digital conversion and eight channels of digital to analog conversion and the digital interface. So it was kind of a, I don't want to say budget level, but at a price point, it had quite a lot going on inside one box, which is exactly what you want if you're not running a big studio because you don't want to be paying tons of money when you can get everything together. Now I've got to the point with the studio where I needed channel expansions. So beyond the eight channels that it gave me, I then got a Focusrite Octopre Dynamic Mark II and that has eight channels of DAC, eight channels of ADC and eight microphone preamps, hence the name Octopre. Uh, so I would run that through ADAT ports uh, into the back of the Liquid Sapphire 56 and instantly that gave me 16 channels running through the same thing because I was still using the Liquid Sapphire 56 as the digital interface. So it was going preamps, conversion to digital, digital interface. Now that worked fine and I also got an Alesis AI3 for extra. That didn't have mic preamps. That was only ADC and DAC. So that converted to and from digital, but couldn't bring microphones up to the level needed. So. That was fine because I have an Allen & Heath mixing desk, which I was using the mic preamps to turn microphone level into line level, then shoving that line level signal into the channels of the AI3. So those together made 24 channels in, 24 channels out. So I was set for a long time. Now, the issue I was having was to do with latency and pops and crackles and that stemmed from Firewire being an, an older technology now. It was great when it was new. Uh, it ran at 400 megabit per second, which before USB 2.0 came out was crazy. Uh, but the 
problem with external interfaces in terms of USB, Firewire, anything up till recently was that the way the systems worked is they would gather up a bunch of information, they would hold on to it, hold on to it, and then send it in a burst, which is great for things like hard drives, but for uh, an audio interface, that waiting is causing latency. And that latency is causing the host computer to have uh, a panic attack, struggling to get everything together before it has to go back out again and back out the speakers. So that was causing some real issues. And recently on my latest studio computer build, you can check out the video for that here. Uh, that's the, the silent rig. I decided to go PCIe. If I remember rightly, I didn't do that immediately, but that was part of the plan. And within a few weeks that was done. And that's where that uh, video about the Radat came in. Now, just a bit of backstory on that. ADAT was kind of like old DAT tapes, except DAT tapes worked in stereo. And ADAT, which was for studios, was an eight channel digital recorder. But instead of a little tape, it used like VHS tapes. It was huge. It was a real pain to work with. I kind of remember it from my early days of learning that you could sync three of them together and have a 24 channel mixing desk run into three VHSs. Ugh. It was awful really now that I think about it. But the part of it that we still use quite often is the Toslink optical side of things. So you know, optical cables that you'll see sometimes at the back of Hi-Fi's, PlayStation 3's, that kind of thing. They can run eight channels of audio each, but only one way. So you need two cables, one to go in, one to come back usually. And now my studio is full of the things because I've got four lots of in, four lots of out. So there's 30 something channels either way and it's crazy. But this is where RME have adopted that technology and gone, hey, that works really well. So let's just make a card that pretty much is centered around that doesn't actually use VHSs anymore. It just uses that transfer communication protocol and sends all the audio digitally. So it's already been converted to the card, which just then feeds it straight to the processor. Ta-da, great. So that is that, it's done. So because I have separate preamps in some cases, I have separate converters and separate digital interface, which is embedded in the computer and there's no waiting time. That means that the performance can be absolutely crazy. And I think I bought the Radar second hand for about 250 pounds. They're new for 400, 440. And I didn't have to change the rest of the gear that I had. And that's quite an important thing because if you look at some of these major interfaces like you know, the Apogee ensembles, that kind of thing, you're talking thousands of pounds for the upgrade. And yes, you get the benefits of super high-end converters and all that kind of jazz, but that's a lot of money. It's still something I'll think about in the long term, but that's a lot of money. One other question that I got asked was about the RME AIO, which is similar to the RADAT, but instead of having four lots of in, four lots of out, so 32 channels each way, it only has one each, so it's eight in, eight out, but it also has two analog ins and two analog outs. And I was asked, how do they sound? Now, I've not used an RME AIO per se, uh, but I have used and do, do own an RME Babyface, which as far as I can see from some basic research, uses the same converters, same quality components as the AIO does. And therefore, if you only need, you know, two channels in, two channels out. So, you know, it doesn't have mic preamps, by the way. Just, just be careful on that. You'd need two mic preamps that go into the analog line in, which would then be converted and digital interface all taken care of. Uh, so you'd still need two mic preamps for microphones, but the two analog outputs could happily drive active monitors at a very, very good quality. I've been very impressed with RME's uh, audio conversion technology there, DACs and ADCs are phenomenal. And I may well end up, if I do go the whole hog and upgrade to crazy level stuff at some point, 
look at the high-end RME stuff because they can they do three or four thousand pound per piece of gear level stuff. And from what I can see, it justifies its price tag. Like I said, it's a lot of money, but it's worth considering. Hope you found this useful. Um, if you didn't find it useful, never mind. The next one hopefully will be quite useful for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit unlike if you disliked it. Um, leave a comment in the section below. Please subscribe. It really means a lot to me that people subscribe because that means that I can keep doing this kind of thing. Even if you never watch any more of the videos, go and press that subscribe button. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios. Catch you next time.